Hello, welcome to Daily Prayer today for Friday, January 30th, 2020. Glad that you are with me today. Today, our readings come from the Daily Lectionary, readings from the Revised Common Lectionary using the NRSV version of the Bible, and our liturgy comes from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA 2018 edition. Let's go ahead and get started. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Gracious God, we give you thanks that through the gift of our baptism, you have embraced us as your own and made us one in Christ's body. By the power of your Holy Spirit, continue to nourish and strengthen us in the ways of faith, hope, and love through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our readings for today, and it is Thursday, January 30th, 2020, my brain, uh, are Psalm 143 and 147, 12 through 20. Genesis 16, 15 through 17, 14, Hebrews 10, 1 through 10, and John 5, 30 through 47. Listen for God's word to speak to you. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications in your faithfulness. Answer me in your righteousness. Do not enter into judgment with your servant. For no one living is righteous before you. For the enemy has pursued me, crushing my life to the ground, making me sit in darkness like those long dead. Therefore my spirit faints within me, my heart within me is appalled. I remember the days of old. I think about all your deeds. I meditate on the works of your hands. I stretch out my hands to you, my soul thirsts for you like a parched land. Selah. Answer me quickly, O Lord. My spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, or I shall be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear of your steadfast love in the morning, for in you I put my trust. Teach me the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Save me, O Lord, from my enemies. I have fled to you for refuge. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on a level path. For your name's sake, O Lord, preserve my life. In your righteousness, bring me out of trouble. In your steadfast love, cut off my enemies and destroy all my adversaries, for I am your servant. And Psalm 147, 12 through 20. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he strengthens the bars of your gates. He blesses your children within you. He grants peace within your borders. He fills you with the finest of wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. His words run swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters frost like ashes. He hurls down hail like crumbs. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and ordinances to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise the Lord. And our reading, Genesis chapter 16, 15 through 17, 14. Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram named him his son, whom Hagar bore, Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore him, Ishmael. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, 
I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations. For an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And I will give to you and to your offspring after you the land where you are now an alien. All the land of Canaan for a perpetual holding and I will be their God. God said to Abraham, As for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your offspring after you throughout their generations. This is my covenant, which you shall keep between me and you and your offspring after you. Every male among you shall be circumcised. You shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskins, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and you. Throughout your generations, every male among you shall be circumcised when he is eight days old including the slave born in your house and the one bought with your money from any foreigner who is not of your offspring. Both the slave born in your house and the one bought with your money must be circumcised. So shall my covenant be in your flesh, an everlasting covenant. Any uncircumcised male who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. Hebrews 10, 1 through 10. Since the law has only a shadow of the good things to come and not the true form of these realities, it can never, by the same sacrifices that are continually offered year after year, make perfect those who approach. Otherwise, would they not have ceased being offered since the worshippers, cleansed once for all, would no longer have any consequence of sin. But, In these sacrifices, there is a reminder of sin year after year. For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have desired, have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings, you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, See, God, I have come to do your will, O God. In the scroll of the book, it is written of me. When he said, Above, you have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings. These are offered according to the law. Then he added, See, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Our gospel reading from John chapter 5, verses 30 through 47. Jesus continues, I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I I judge, and my judgment is true, because I seek to do not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. If I testify about myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who testified on my behalf, and I know that his testimony to me is true. You sent messengers to John, and he testified to the truth. Not that I accept such human testimony, but I say these things so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice in a while in his light. But I have a testimony greater than John's. The works that the Father has given me to complete, the very works that I am doing, testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me has himself testified on my behalf. 
You have never heard his voice or seen his form, and you do not have his word abiding in you, because you do not believe him who he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life, and it is they that testify on my behalf, yet you refuse to come to me to have life. I do not accept glory from human beings, but I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. If another comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe when you accept glory from one another and do not seek the glory that comes from the one who alone is God? Do not think that I will accuse you before my Father. Your accuser is Moses, on whom you have set your hope. If you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe what he wrote, how will you believe what I say? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, so an, another set of great ones, right? Um, some lovely psalms. I'm not going to talk a lot about it because there's a lot to unpack in the other stuff. So in Genesis, we have the, the giving of the covenant, the sign of the covenant. This is some 10 years after Ishmael has been born. And God comes again to Abram and n- renames him Abraham. Now, um, it's interesting that this the, the switch from Abram to Abraham um, is basically the addition of a, a, a H sound in English. Um, the breath of God goes into his name, Abraham, right? He's, he's given this breath of life almost. Um, and he is called to take on this sign of the covenant, which is circumcision. And he and every male in his household is to take on this bodily, physically, physical sign to show very clearly that they are part of God's people, um, that they are part of this group of those who do this. Um, It is a constant reminder for them that they are part of this group, that they are marked, that they are made God's own people because of this. Um, This is an important sign for the Jewish people and will continue to be an important sign as as we go forward. But just like any other sign, it is also a shadow. It is a a glimmer of what is truly, as we hear about in Hebrews. Hebrews talks about this, this, um, the, the sacrificing of rams and bulls and all of these sorts of things, and that ultimately these things don't take away sin. They may blot it out. They do not take it away. Um, For that, you need a a better sacrifice, a more pure sacrifice. Talking about Jesus and Jesus' sacrifice. um, That God never desired the sacrifice of animals. That was not the, the, the hope of God. The hope of God was that his people would be restored in righteousness to him. And so the sacrificial system was to sort of start that up, but to then bolster and and show and point to the sacrifice of Jesus, the Son of God, um, God made flesh. This is the sacrifice that that cleanses us all. And Jesus speaks to these Pharisees and says, you know, you just you don't understand where I'm coming from, even. You've never heard my father. Um, you don't know his voice. This is, this is a burn. They're going to have to get some, some first aid cream to... Yeah, anyways, it's a burn. Um, that he's saying you, you don't understand God at all. Because if you did, you would understand the one who sent him, himself, right? Jesus. He says, I, I don't even testify on my behalf because there's a greater one who testifies on my behalf. Hey, listen, you you talk to John, right? You talk to him. He testified on my behalf. And even he is not as good. The living God, my father, testifies to me, about me. And you're going around, you're you're testifying on one beha- one another's behalf. Oh, this is so and so, I know him, you know, I'm gonna vouch for him, that sort of stuff. He says, I, I come 
bearing the the um, the commendation of the living God, and you don't listen. You don't want to listen. Um, these are his continued uh, pretty strong words to the to the Jewish authorities here. Let's go ahead and join together in prayer. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will leave, live this day in joy and praise. God of all mercies, we praise you that you have brought us to this new day, brightening our lives with the dawn of promise and hope in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for ministries of discernment and governance. those who teach, and those who learn. The community of faith in your church. Reconciliation in our relationships. All gifts of healing and forgiveness. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? Merciful God, strengthen us in our prayer that we may lift up the brokenness of this world for your healing and share in the saving love of Jesus Christ. Especially we pray for the church in Europe. Safe, clean, and renewable energy. Those who are lonely and forgotten. Those from whom we are estranged. All who glorify you in worship and service. People of God, for what else do we pray? Lord God, today I I lift up to you Russell and Jolyn. Uh, for their continued amazing support, for their deep roots in Presbyterianism, uh, for Russell's being a, a commissioner to the General Assembly, the last General Assembly, um, and commitment as an elder. Thank you for their family and all the joys and pains in a family and all of the things that they are dealing with. Lift up uh, Russell also, who is dealing with shingles. Eternal God, you are the source of every gift and the fountain of all blessing. Give us such joy in living and such peace in serving Christ that we may gratefully make use of all your blessings and joyfully seek our risen Lord in everyone we meet. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Now let us continue to pray using the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So far as it depends on us, let us live peaceably with all. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for Daily Prayer. Join me next time for some more. If you liked this, go ahead and give it a like and share it with someone else. Subscribe if you have not done so already and click the notification button. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye.